So here's another example of a double integral. This time the limits actually go out to infinity uh, for both x and for y, but it works pretty much in the same kind of way. Uh, so what do I have to do? Well, first of all, I've got to integrate this function, y squared e to the minus x to the 4, first, first with respect to x and then with respect to y. And now my limits of integration are x has to vary from y to infinity. So in other words, um, if I write this as an inequality, x has got to start from uh, y and go out to infinity. Or maybe if I write this as a, a strict inequality, because I'm dealing with infinity, uh, that's going to be less than infinity, and it's going to be bounded below by y. What about the outer integral? Well, that tells us that y has to vary um, from 0 to infinity. So this is the region of integration that I want to deal with. Is it possible for me to get started on the integral right away? Well, no, because if I try to integrate this with respect to x, I've got e to the minus x to the 4, and I definitely can't integrate that. In fact, if I try, I won't be able to get in something in terms of uh, elementary functions. Um, so I've got to find a way of changing the order of integration. Well, obviously, I can just write this as dy dx, but what really matters here is what happens to the lower limits and upper limits of integration. So in order to do that, well, one way is just to look at the inequalities, which you can uh, deduce the answer from that. But I, I like to use a graph. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to plot uh, the uh, lines corresponding to x equals y and x equals infinity. Uh, strictly speaking, you can't really plot the line x equals infinity. Uh, so instead, what I'll do is I'll just write a um, uh, the line x equals uh, k for some constant k. Um, it works the same whether you use a constant or infinity. Uh, strictly speaking, you shouldn't really be able to do that, but um, I think it makes it easier to visualize it. Um, and the same thing for y. Uh, by the way, you'll see what I'm talking about in a second when I draw this. So I've got to start from y equals 0, and I've got, out from, I've got to go to y equals infinity. So what does this look like uh, if I physically draw this thing, draw my region of integration? Oh, let's see. Well, I've got to draw the line y equals x. That's fairly straightforward. It's just the line, the diagonal line, right through the origin. It's not quite through the origin of my picture, but it's supposed to be through the origin. So that's the line y equals x. And I'm going to uh, plot, that's plot in quotation marks, the line x equals infinity, which I'm going to plot like this. So uh, let's write it like this. So that's uh, x equals infinity in quotation marks. Okay, so what about the outer integral? Well, I've got to plot the lines y equals 0 and y equals infinity. Well, y equals 0 is just the x-axis, so that's... That is the line uh, y equals 0. And I've got to plot the line y equals infinity, which looks something like, like this. So that's... Uh, y equals infinity in quotation marks. So the region of integration I'm actually interested in is the region that is bounded by all of these lines. Well, first of all, it's going to be bounded between y equals 0 and y equals infinity, so it definitely lies uh, inside these two rays. It's also going to satisfy the constraint that um, y is less than or equal to x is less than infinity. So it's, it's got to satisfy, uh, it's got to be between these two lines and under this curve and to the left of this line, x equals infinity. So the only possible uh, uh, region it could be is this triangle. So if I just draw an outline here, this is the region of integration I'm dealing with. Okay, so if I look back at my original integral, it says my function has got some limits, dx, dy. All I want to do is uh, take this dx and dy and change them round. So it reads dy, dx. So if I write my integral like this. I don't yet know what these upper and lower limits of integration are. My function is y squared e to the minus x to the power 4 and I want it to be dy dx. So that's what I want. Well if I'm integrating first with respect to y obviously on this region I've got to start from 0. So if I do this in pink I've got to start from 0 so my lower limit in this case is going to be 0, 
and I'm integrating with respect to y, so it's going to be in the direction of the y-axis. So I'm going to start from this baseline y equals 0, and just integrate upwards, like so. And notice that each time I do this, I'm hitting the boundary of uh, this line. In fact, I'm just hitting this line, y equals x. So the region of integration is entirely determined by this line y equals x. So the upper limit in every single case is just going to be x. So that takes care of the integral with respect to y. Now, how about with respect to x? Well, it's the same thing. I've just now got to do it uh, going horizontally instead of vertically. So again, inside this triangle, I'm starting from 0. So I'm starting from 0. That's the lower limit. Do that a bit better. How's my upper limit? Well, if I start from here and go to the right, like that, every single time I am actually hitting the line x equals infinity. So my upper limit is going to be infinity. So this is my new region of integration. It's in fact the same region of integration, I've just changed the limits to account for the fact that I'm integrating in a different order. So can I now do the integral? Well, what have I got? Well, I've got y squared e to the minus x to the 4 dy. The e to the minus x to the 4 definitely doesn't depend on y, so I can for the moment treat it like a constant. The y squared term does depend on y, and I can definitely integrate that because that's just a polynomial. So. Let's do the integral. Well, I'm going to leave the outer integral alone for now. That's the integral from 0 to infinity. And the inner integral says I've got to integrate y squared dy, um, where the limits range from 0 to x. So if I use this e to the minus x to the 4, use that as constant out front. What's the integral of y squared? It's 1 third y cubed. So that's 1 third y cubed. Um, evaluated from the limits, uh, 0 to x. And I've got the dx here. So as usual, if I plug in my limits, I've got the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus, maybe do the e a little bit better, so it looks like an e and not a c or a squiggly line, e to the minus x to the 4 times something. Well, if I substitute an x, I'm going to get a third x cubed. I substitute in 0, I'm just going to get a third 0 cubed, which is just 0. So that's going to be 1 third. Um, x cubed dx. And now this is looking a lot simpler. I can now just use integration by substitution as I would normally do, as I also did in my previous example. So if I let u be x to the power 4, then that tells me that du is 4x cubed dx. Now I don't want 4x cubed, I actually want a third x cubed because that's what's appearing in my integral. So I've got to divide by 4, and then I've got to divide by 3. In other words, I've got to divide by 12. So, in other words, 1 12th du is 1 third x cubed dx. So that takes care of that. What's my new integral look like? My new integral looks like this. Well, what, what's the limits? Well, when x equals 0, clearly u equals 0. So when x equals 0, u equals 0, so my lower limit is definitely 0. And when x, when x goes to infinity, um, clearly u goes to infinity, so my upper limit is infinity. What happens to my function? Well, I've got e to the minus x of the 4, that's just e to the minus u. So e to the minus u times a 12th du. So times, if I, well, let's write it like this, times a 12th du. And this is very simple to integrate. Well, the integral of e to the minus u is just minus e to the minus u. So this is just the, uh, well, it's 1 12th, or minus 1 12th, times e to the minus u, evaluated from 0 to infinity. So that's minus 1 over 12 times something. Well, if I substitute in something, it's if, well, if I substitute in, in quotation marks infinity, I'll have e to the minus infinity. Well, in other words, if u gets very, very big, and I've got e to the minus something that is very, very big, then this thing is actually going to tend to 0. So I've actually got 0, that's my first term, minus e to the minus 0, minus e to the minus 0. What's that? Well, 
I've got minus 112 minus e to the minus 0. e to the minus 0 is exactly the same as e to the 0, and anything to the 0th power is 1. So that's just minus 1. Well, minus 12 times minus 1, that's just a 1 12th. So the value of my double integral after changing the order of integration is simply uh, 1 12th. So that's all I wanted to show you. If you like this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. Thanks for watching.